Good evening. I'm Aaron Burnett. Out front tonight, the Hill team Trump is ready to die on. And those words are from a Trump official who tells CNN tonight that the president will go all the way to the Supreme Court to keep his taxes secret. The battle lines are drawn. Democrats giving Trump only until this coming Wednesday. And they say, that's it. That's your deadline. Six years of tax returns by Wednesday. Team Trump, absolutely not, they say. Releasing the letter that you see here, a four-page letter, saying the request is nothing more than, in their word, quote, harassment. The president is saying, I won the election. So the issue of tax returns... It's over. We've seen the, the letter that your lawyers have sent about your tax returns. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? Nothing explain? whatsoever. Nothing whatsoever. So, I have this, nothing to say about it. It's, uh, I got elected. They elected me. Now they keep going. I'm under audit. When you're under audit, you don't do it. But I'm under audit. First of all, we have no idea if Trump is under audit. The IRS does not confirm who is under audit. But we do know that Trump lied when he said this. If I decide to run for office, I'll produce my tax returns, absolutely. Absolutely not? No, that wasn't the next word. No, so he said he would do something and he didn't do it. What is President Trump so afraid of? If there is nothing fraudulent, nothing wrong, just things that tax experts could argue about, like depreciation schedules, then this should not be an issue. But it is an issue for the president. And tonight, the president is betting that this man, Michael Desmond, will protect him. You may not know him, but Michael Desmond is Trump's handpicked chief counsel of the IRS, a man who has done work for Trump org. According to the New York Times, the president asked Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell to push through Desmond's confirmation earlier this year. Pamela Brown is out front live in Washington. And Pamela, what more uh, is the president arguing here? This, this, this hill, they say, they are willing to die on over tax returns. That's right. They are gearing up for this fight, and they escalated this fight today. I'm talking about uh, President Trump's lawyers with this letter sent to the Treasury Department's general counsel saying that the demand from the House Ways and Means Committee for the president's tax returns the last six years is a gross abuse of power. It's harassment that there is no legitimate legitimate reason for this demand to for the, the tax returns and that really this is just about politics that the Democrats on Capitol Hill won the president's tax returns because the president is in another party. That is basically what is laid out here in this letter and they also reference the fact that the president's tax returns are under audit according to the president and according to his lawyers but as you pointed out we don't have independent confirmation of that. But even if they are under audit, Aaron, as we know, the tax returns can still be released. Now, I'm told by a source familiar with the matter that this is something the president's lawyers have been preparing for for several months. This was expected for this, um, for the demand to be made to the IRS from the chairman of the committee. But Democrats, as you know, they're also digging in their heels, Aaron. They, they say that this is all part of their oversight responsibility, and they too feel like they ha have solid legal footing here. So this fight is just beginning. An administration official telling uh, my colleague Jim Acosta that they expect this to go all the way to the Supreme Court. They're prepared to. Aaron. All right, Pamela, thank you very much. And I want to go to Harry Sandick, former assistant U.S. attorney for the Southern District, David K. Johnston, author of The Making of Donald Trump, and Jack O'Donnell, former president and chief operating officer of the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino. So, David, you have been looking at the president's finances for a long time and any issues he's had with courts over them for a long time. We are being told tonight that the, they're willing to die on this hill. This is a hill people would be willing to die on. It is the quote from uh, Team Trump on this issue. Why? Why, David, are they willing to do this? Well, keep in mind that Donald was tried <coughs> twice for income tax fraud by the state of New York and the city of New York, and the judges in both cases excoriated him. Donald's own witness shown the tax return, testified under oath, that's my signature, but I did not prepare that tax return, which is a pretty strong badge of fraud. Uh, this idea that Donald doesn't have to produce them is absurd. Since 1924, Congress has put in place an anti-corruption law that says the Treasury Secretary shall produce not only tax returns, but any related information that the government has upon the request of certain members of Congress and one staff employee of Congress. So what Donald's really saying is, well, I'm president, I'm above the law. So, I mean, it, it just doesn't make any sense. It, 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 Jack, you know, you've known the president for a long time, so maybe you can make more sense of it because you're very familiar with his businesses, with how he operates, um, how he wants to account for things. What do you think he's afraid of? 
Well, I mean, there's the ego part, Aaron, for sure. You know, who knows? Maybe the taxes reveal that he's not the Donald Trump that he presents, which is probably most likely Meaning based on what we've heard. Meaning not worth that much money, um, doesn't have that much income. Sorry. Yep. Yeah, I think his net worth, it's always been a big deal to him going back to the Forbes days. You know, what is he worth? And so I think that that's a big piece for him. But, you know, I think there's, like David suggests, there's probably a lot to hide. And, um, you know, that is something that he just might not survive in 2020. I mean, Harry, you know, the, the president today was asked about this. I played a little mm -hmm. clip of it. And then he went on to comment about whether Democrats will succeed in court on this. And here's how he answered that question. That's up to whoever handles it. I don't know. Hey, I'm under audit. But that's up to whoever it is. I, from what I understand, the law is 100 percent on my side. 100 percent? No, the law is not 100 percent on his side. So there's a statute, as, as has already been discussed, that says that Congress can ask for this information for any person. Mm -hmm. Now, there are uh, some potential issues. Uh, there's a question that's been raised, I think, about whether this actually relates to Congress's legislative oversight role. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a question that's fair about uh, the privacy of taxpayers, which is important. But I think the fact that you have a very specific statute that says that the IRS shall provide this information to the, to the Ways and Means Committee means that at the end of the day, the Ways and Means Committee has the better case. But it could take a very long time to sort that out in the courts. So, David, what do you think uh, that he is so afraid of? Obviously, I know net worth could be something, obviously, that, that he is, right? He's, he's, he's put out numbers that even by his own you know, financial disclosure forms, when they had to be signed, um, obviously, it was night and day in terms of the numbers, right? It went way down. Um, but is there anything more than that that he's afraid of, than ego? I think there are, yeah, I think there are a lot of things. I mean, early in his life, he was reporting negative income because he was a real estate developer. Uh, in some recent years, he got the star property tax credit, uh, which homeowners like I get here in New York. And to get it, you have to have less than $500,000 of income. It will show uh, transactions. And one of the things I think he may be worried about is once they have some transactions that appear on the tax return, they can be compared with other government reports dealing with money laundering and flows of money across international borders. And if those don't match up, he could be in very serious trouble, not for tax reasons, but other reasons like money laundering. And Harry, that's obviously a crucial question here uh, because a lot of his real estate deals uh, are overseas. Money laundering is a, is a crucial thing they look at in real estate deals and Trump's tax returns, by the way, and they didn't just ask for his personal, they asked for quite a few of his yep. businesses. Uh, all, this money, it goes across several returns. Yeah, and, and look, this is absolutely a fair basis for congressional oversight. Uh, I don't know if Ways and Means mentioned it, but there are issues about the emoluments clause, about whether he is receiving money from foreign governments through his businesses. These are things that Congress is entitled to look at. And some of the points his lawyers make don't really make much sense. They said at one point, why didn't the committee ask the last few presidents to turn over their tax returns? And of course, the answer is going back to the Nixon administration. All presidents have made their tax returns public, so they didn't need to uh, right. make a broader request. So uh, there are valid oversight reasons for this. So, Jack, um, I, I mentioned uh, the, 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 the counsel for the IRS, right? This uh, man, Michael Desmond, um, the president had wanted that nomination to be fast-tracked, right? He obviously knows this guy, perceives that he would be friendly. That's the president's perception, right? This is someone who had worked uh, on, on some sort of a tax issue at one point for, for Trump org. Um, you think that, that the president thinks that Mr. Desmond is in his corner, right? That would be the reason for this? Well, absolutely, Aaron. I mean, let's face it, the vetting process for his administration is it's very simple. It's ask not what I could do for my country, but what I can do for Trump. And this is a classic example of that. He knew exactly what Barr, Attorney General Barr, was going to do with the Mueller report. He knows exactly what Desmond is going to do when he's questioned about the legality of releasing Trump's taxes. He will create a smokescreen for Donald Trump. And to me, that's just very clear. That's consistent with Trump's lifelong idea behind having surrounding himself with fixers. So, you know, when you say fixers, right, I mean, like Michael Cohen has said, Michael Cohen was a fixer and um, Michael Cohen's going to prison. Um, Harry, how long does this fight go on? If this is a hill they're willing to die on, it doesn't sound like we're going to be getting returns, obviously, next week. I mean, I say yeah. that sort of facetiously at this point. How long does the fight go? I wouldn't be surprised if this ran through the presidential election, just because there are 
issues of constitutional law and statutory interpretation. A case takes a long time to go through federal district court, then the circuit court of appeals, and then the Supreme Court. A case that goes to the Supreme Court could take a year from the time when the court decides to hear it until the time when there's a decision. So it wouldn't surprise me if this ran, ran through the election.